Us now from San Francisco is Dr. Alok Patel. Thanks for being with us again. Good morning, Larry and Robin. Good morning. So we initially heard 70% effective on this Oxford vaccine, but that's just with one dose. Talk about these three vaccines that are really above the 90% rate and how soon are we going to see those? Well, Robin, off the bat, it's optimistic news and it's an incredible feat by science. You know, early in summer, the FDA was saying they'll look at any vaccine that has above a 50% effectivity. Now we have three coming in at 70%, which is what you mentioned with AstraZeneca, and then about 94 to 95% for Moderna and Pfizer. That's amazing. Now, the earliest we might be able to see needles in arms could potentially be the end of this year if everything goes according to plan with the emergency use authorization that Pfizer just filed for with the FDA. But I think we're probably a oh, no. few months away from actually having widespread distribution, which is what everyone is hoping for. So we still have to hunker down and do what we got to do this winter. Uh, to be clear, I said, oh, no, not because of what you were saying, because you froze <laughs> mid-sentence there. But you're back with us. Yeah. So, doctor, what, <laughs> That's what you, 2020. <laughs> <laughs> right. this, I swear. What are you hearing from your colleagues about their willingness to take this vaccine under this emergency um, plan? Larry, it's a good question. And, you know, just to be completely transparent, a lot of my colleagues and public health officials have said two things. The first thing they've said is if this vaccine goes through the necessary step and safety review by the FDA and gets approved by the same method we've approved every other vaccine, people would be comfortable taking it. And then the other half have said, we'll take it as long as Dr. Fauci takes it. Ah, interesting. Interesting, but don't most scientists know that uh, you know these vaccines usually go through years of trials, and we don't know long-term side effects. So should people be concerned? Robin, it's a good question, and vaccines go through years of trials, and a lot of it has to do with development. Now, the vaccines people are looking at right now, the research had already been done for other for other uses, and they've just been reappropriated for coronavirus. That's why they were able to speed this up so much faster. You know, the technology used for Pfizer, Moderna, the mRNA vaccine, and the one used for AstraZeneca, which is kind of like a virus genome vaccine, they're just faster in terms of getting them out and getting them distributed. And I, I say again, if people are concerned, just look to the fact that these phases, phase one, two, and three, are done very systematically. They're paused for any concerns, and the FDA approves the entire process. And so the one big question is how long the immunity will actually last. But people should be reassured by the safety if they do go through approval. And so obviously first responders go to the top of the list. And I'm wondering for, for, for other people who maybe are not senior citizens, where are they if they have asthma, they have you know, minor heart issues, let's say, do you need a doctor's note? How do, how do you move up that list? Larry, the rumor is, is that people who have underlying medical conditions or those who are high risk would be next in line when you talk after considering first line medical workers and essential workers. And so they would probably be in the same bracket with people who are elderly. But you pose a good question. I think it remains to be determined how doctors are going to triage, if you will, who gets the vaccine. Do you have to check in with your doctor and get screened to make sure you move up that list? And I would suspect that it'll take a really well thought out distribution plan for that very reason. Real quickly, Thanksgiving week upon us, everyone worried. Do you think we'll see a spike? And I've seen people waiting in line to get COVID tests, thinking they'll be in the all clear for the holiday if they get a negative result. I hate being called the fun police, but I am worried we're going to see a spike because we've seen packed airports all over the country. And a lot of people think that just getting a negative test will protect them and their family from a potential outbreak. A test is only one part of a protective measure. And I think that's why, given all the cases we're seeing rising throughout the entire country, the CDC has called for people just to lay low during Thanksgiving, make this Thanksgiving suck so that future ones don't have to. Oh, I don't think we've had a doctor say suck on the air, did yeah. we? Yeah, good you know, for sometimes you. Sometimes you can't be scientific, you just have to be direct. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna put that in the first column. Thank you, Dr. Thanks, Patel, doctor. it's good to see you again. Take have that. Have a good rest of the day. Take yeah. that, Happy holidays. Paul. Yeah. Doesn't blow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good morning.